All right, video number three. We are now looking at an adult male green anaconda. Here's my hand, so you get a size reference. Okay, so this male, God, he's, he's at least, at least uh, six years old. So although he could be bigger, uh, I choose not to make him bigger because I use this for a captive breeding situation. Hi, buddy. So he's checking me out. Now, anacondas, I said in my other videos, are dimorphic, which means one sex is smaller growing than the other. Males are often, in some cases, can be easily a third of the size of the female. Uh, but this is a, a breedable male, and he breeds. And this guy is, oh, maybe about six and a half feet long. And he's not bloodthirsty at all. So anacondas are literally, basically think of a boa constrictor, but it's a water boa. So that means that this guy in the wild would spend a lot of his time in the, the waters of, you know, tropical South America, including Peru. But uh, anacondas are not the largest growing snake in the world. They may have the heaviest body mass for their length, but the longest or greatest size pythons are reticulated pythons being the longest. Python sabay, which is African rock pythons, they can also become quite heavy in captivity. But uh, reticulated pythons overall are our legitimate, you know, largest growing uh, constrictors. And anacondas, they're, they're like, uh, they're reputed as being all these different things because, you know, a lot of uh, make-believe folklore. But if you were to go out on the internet, you see all sorts of fantastic stories about anaconda eating people. Anaconda is eating cows. You know, it's really painful. Often when I'm looking at these videos, these things are all made up. They're showing not an anaconda or they show a picture of an anaconda from Africa or all this different nonsense. There's people that, you know, they spend their time creating make-believe stuff to freak people out and then it gets passed around on the internet and somewhere along the line, we have uh, decided that that is fact and factual. So I'm just trying to show you reality. So we're looking at a little anaconda. This is a captive anaconda, uh, not some 17 foot giant at all. And I've, I've kept and bred anacondas for years. So hearing about 16, 17 foot anacondas and all this stuff, that's silly. That shed laid on the rocks was a plant. Somebody's just playing games. And this is uh, somebody evidently that wants to get some media attention, some hysteria, any kind of stuff like that, basically to uh, get the people that want to ban such pets in the state of Maine. Now Maine's even gone so far that you can't even have koi fish outside because they feel like the koi and goldfish will get loose in the environment and take over. I don't understand what is going on with Maine. I am in New Hampshire. Uh, being in New Hampshire, I am surrounded by intense legislation from other states. And the, the real discouraging thing here is these laws are built on make-believe. They're not even they're not even founded on reality. So they're you know the government decides to elect these laws to protect the people and the environment from uh, supposed threats or, or some kind of, you know, danger. Well, it's not even real. This is, you know, I'm just, I'm reacting to this green anaconda thing a little late because I've been watching this and I'm just like, I'm beside myself. I can't believe that people are actually giving this a life. And it's been going on for a while, but I have green anacondas. I also have giant snakes. I have some of the biggest pythons in North America. And uh, these animals are nothing like what we're reading about. All right, so this is installment three, but I welcome anybody to debate me. And to further my point, I am one of the leading experts when it comes to uh, dealing with our, basically, organization of herpet herpetoculturists. Uh, versus uh, legislation, let's say sometimes elected or suggested by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. So I work with the attorneys and I provide information that is then used as facts when we're dealing with their supposed facts. So uh, anybody that wants to go uh, against me, I hope you really know your stuff.
because I am very well versed at this. And if you want to perpetuate make-believe nonsense, I don't care if you're a zoologist, I don't care if you're a state biologist, all I care about is reality. And if you don't know anything about this and you go on camera and you go into the media and you perpetuate nonsense, I'm gonna take you know uh, response to that. And I challenge you, if you really are an expert and you know your stuff, then let's go see you go toe to toe with me regarding these animals and let's stick to the facts. All right, there you go. Installment number three, my name's Kevin McCurley. New England Reptile, say goodbye.